Uh, with us this morning is William H. Murray, and uh, and Bill is going to be talking about some of the updates, the FFIEC guidance here in New York City. All right, so uh, Bill, take it away. Good morning. After only one week's respite, events have brought us back to banking and account takeover attacks. The Federal Financial Institution Examination Council, the FFIEC, has finally passed its long-awaited new authentication guidance. It was hoped that this guidance would address the account takeover attacks that have resulted in both losses to and disputes between the banks and their customers. Those security professionals that had hoped that the guidance would address the credential replay that is at the heart of this problem can only be disappointed. Indeed, almost everyone is disappointed with the exception of the banks and the regulators themselves. The language is somewhere between wishy-washy and largely content-free. For example, it says an institution should use effective methods to authenticate the identity of customers and techniques employed should be commensurate with the risks associated with the products and services offered and the protection of some sensitive customer information. On the other hand, it is silent on the relative effectiveness of these measures and makes no recommendations among them. It dismisses token-based strong authentication on the basis that it might be vulnerable to man-in-the-middle attacks. While that may be true, we are not seeing any such attacks. On the other hand, token-based resists is resistant to the replay attacks that we are seeing. The guidance suggests that we need better questions and challenge response systems. Of course, the problem is not the resistance of the questions to guessing, but how many questions there are and how quickly they leak to a keylogger. Again, it is as if the authors do not really understand the attacks. If there is anything in the guidance that I agree with, it is the idea of layered security. The idea is that we should not rely exclusively on the authentication, regardless of how good we think that it is. We should have policy, application controls, monitoring, timely confirmations, and reconciliation. PATCO and experimentals could both have been a lot worse without these controls. That said, these controls mitigate the fundamental problem of credential replay. They do not compensate for it. Moreover, the document is labeled authentication guidance. We have a right to expect that it will speak to that not what to do in case you don't have good authentication. Now, part of the problem is that the agencies do not want to preempt the responsibility of bank management. Thus, they emphasize risk management. They even acknowledge that the risk has changed since they published their original guidance. Banks have the fundamental responsibility to protect the customer, and regulatory agencies cannot protect them from that fundamental responsibility. Another part of the problem is that the FFIEC is made up of the five federal agencies that regulate financial institutions. The Office of the Controller of the Currency, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the Federal Reserve Bank, the National Credit Union Administration, and the new Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Each has different constituents and interests. The purpose of the Council is to promote uniformity in regulation among the, the, the regulators and limit institutional shopping among the regulators. Perhaps it's a little much to expect that five government agencies would ever arrive at strong guidance on anything. However, the result is to set the bar at the lowest of all the agencies. As one of the authors put it, the guidance provided minimum, emphasis mine, minimum supervisory expectations for effective authentication controls applicable to high-risk online transactions involving access to the information or the movement of funds to other parties. As I read the guidance and the commentary on it, I kept coming back to the same question. What part of replay do they not understand? Finally, I scanned the document. The word replay does not appear. They do not understand any of it. When they are criticized for not addressing replay, their response is, 
placing so much emphasis on what's missing from the guidance detracts from the regulator's intent. Perhaps, perhaps they simply do not get it. Perhaps it's not even their job. Perhaps we're expecting too much of them. Perhaps it's our job. Our job is not to debate whether or not the guidance from the regulators is correct or complete. In fact, we have known since shortly after Sarbanes-Oxley that security by compliance encourage, encourages minimalist, not to say weak, security. No bank is going to have to change what it is doing to meet this new guidance. Hopefully, they will meet the requirement in spite of the guidance, if not because of it. The guidance sets a low bar, but does not forbid high clearance. Indeed, our job, without regard to the guidance, is to keep our principles out of the debate and to be sure that they are out of the fray. To be sure that bad regulatory guidance is not used to justify weak security. The good news is that we do not need the guidance to tell us what to do, and now we can stop waiting for its magic. The bad news is that some management might decide to use the guidance to justify continuing whatever they are already doing. It is our job to see that our principles do the right thing, whatever the guidance says. It is for that that we are called professionals and are paid the big bucks. See you next week. Yeah, right on, right on the money there, Bill. Uh, right, right on that money. Uh, once again, uh, you hit the point very well. And 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 the fear is that some companies would take the 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 guidance as gospel, and 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 not only you know teach to it, but but not lead, but follow it. <laughs> yeah. And th th there is a list in the appendix of, of controls that they consider to be part of the system of layered controls. That's a pretty good list. It's not complete. There are still some key things that I would have put in it that they left out. Maybe that's a topic for another week. Uh, but the, the, uh, the things that are in there are all things that ought to be con in everybody's uh, toolkit that we ought to be considering to be used in this situation. Authentication is not the end all and be all of the solution to this problem, but it is, it is, it, it, it's hard to compensate for its absence. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand that completely. Um, and and it, it certainly, you know, it bears re repeating in there that it should definitely be in that mix. There's no doubt about it. The fear, of course, of with, with the FFIEC and these guys over there are very well-intentioned people, and I don't know, as you say in your commentary, that they're required to hit every nail on the head. All right. Um, my my fear, of course, is is that um, just like a little a lot of federal guidance, people will just go to the guidance and and stop there, um, saying that well, I have no responsibility any further. All right, and use that almost as an excuse. And and that might even be, uh, uh, you know, no management is going to get in trouble by coming up to the minimum of the, that's required by the guidance. Right. Our job as security professionals to look at the real requirement and come up with solutions that meet the requirement, not simply solutions that meet the guidance. Yeah, well, I, I, so one of the reasons why you do the editorial on the show, I, I don't disagree with you at all. You're, you're hitting this right down the middle, and uh, hopefully a, a lot of people will listen to this. We'll put it out on LinkedIn, Facebook, and a, a number of other places and let people ponder uh, the solutions that you've offered here and some of the guidance. Uh, invaluable once again. Thank you, Bill. Have a good day. Bye.